Now I think that you can hear me now. Now, yes. I was saying before that the, there is a lag between... Okay, I'm gonna, I can try. are able to listen to me now yes now yes now people is saying here that everything is going well maybe now I'm 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 sorry I'm just testing the sound again Looks like uh, maybe I should turn this off. I'm checking the sound again because I don't know with any reason I am listening to me at the same time that I am speaking. I'm going to try to avoid this. So now I think looks like everything is working fine now. I'm sorry, because I had said before, uh, this is the this is going to be my first streaming. So I am still testing how everything works. So I am having some technical issues. So thank you very much for all who are here. I am watching that there are many people more than I have expected, and. Uh, And, and, and I'm going to try at the same time while I'm speaking, trying to read what you are writing. But it's going to be, I think it's going to be complicated for me as uh, for the first time. But uh, I, I will try. If you have any questions or any things to tell me. But the, the idea here is, well, before I start saying anything, the, the stream the idea of the stream is going to be in English, as you are noticing. So, because I had made many, many, many courses and uh, many uh, presentation in uh, already in Spanish, and also maybe in the future I'm gonna be able to, to make one stream in Spanish. But I decide today I'm gonna try to to speak to my English speaking audience. But again, anyway, if you have any question in Spanish, I can switch from English to Spanish, and I'm gonna try to translate between each its language but the idea here on my streaming is try to reach the the people who has been asking to me during the time about if I have some courses or or any information in English because I, I have been making only courses in Spanish so the, a lot of people are um, some of them I know some of some of them I'm writing the messages and uh, I'm gonna try to concentrate on the on what I have planned to make today instead of be all only uh, reading what you are writing. Uh, some people are asking here: Is uh, the streaming is gonna be recorded? Yes. I see. Se va a grabar. It's going to be. I'm gonna record and I'm gonna upload the whole streaming after or I guess because as I said before this is my first streaming I suppose that everything is gonna be recorded I, I am watching here my red dot he it is recording already but okay let's see if I have any problems of any issues to to upload it on to my YouTube channel 
but I think it's gonna be recorded for sure uh, okay the curses the curses I have been given curses in Spanish but today the, the idea that I have the reason why I am talking here in YouTube making a stream is because I'm gonna try to make live curses it's not gonna be a real curse because it's just it's just an streaming when I am gonna be working and um, talking to you or chatting with you on, on the on the live chat and trying to show what I'm doing oh my oh my see brush it's not gonna be a real, a real curse it's just to be uh, today we are gonna make we're gonna create this or we're gonna try that but uh, trying to explain or to show my workflows or my way of working and it's not we can we, you can call it a curse you want but it's not gonna be a real course in terms of we are gonna be we're gonna go step by step showing different things or tools uh, mainly the the streams are going to be for people who already are using zebras maybe for medium to intermediate level or maybe high level I don't know depending on what we know about high level depending on let's see intermediate or medium level I mean that I'm not going to start but from the basics so I'm not gonna be start talking about what is a tool or what is a sub tool or whatever so I gotta be be right away to start working on something and you're gonna have the chance to ask me your doubts or your questions so uh, it, so it's not gonna be necessary to uh, to to follow on a straight line I mean that if you are asking something different like we can I can stop what I'm doing and I can ask answer your question so no problem and uh, so for the people who are comes from Spain or from, from Latin America maybe my English is not gonna be so very complicated to understand I guess or so I think it's gonna be easy to understand or or even more if you what you are watching you already know what I'm doing for example if I'm working with zebras and you are already using zebras it this is my opinion doesn't matter maybe some the language so because you are you know you can recognize what I am doing so it's not gonna be uh, an issue for you I guess but anyway I said again if uh, anyone needs to an explanation in Spanish, I can switch the language, and I, I, we can start talking in, in Spanish for for a moment. Uh, 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 okay, I think that everything is working fine. And if you have any questions during the during the stream, you can ask it to me. So the the idea of this, this first stream is just is introducing myself as this is my first stream I guess or I suppose that all of you already know who I am because for any reason you know my work in the on the net uh, I know some of you I'm watching on the chat that there are familiar people there but uh, for the rest of the people who have seen my my social media publications maybe already know my my work and you are interesting about what I am doing for that reason I have to say I have to give you a th say you thank you because just for following me on the on Instagram or whatever whenever or on the social media and thank you again if you like what I'm doing or if you are here because you think that I have something to teach you or something to show you different or this is very this is something that I like and I, as I said before there are many people over here watching the watching the stream watching the stream okay hold on a second because I'm gonna I need to create something here before I start making something real sorry only a minute For the next time, I'm gonna have all, everything already control. 
I guess. Okay, I'm checking if everything is working fine with the chat. It's synchronized between what I'm watching here and what you are writing. Okay, looks like everything is, is working fine. Okay, so you can start dropping your your questions or or your expect expectations about uh, what you would like to to see here. Uh, for example, if, uh, if you are looking for uh, ZBrush techniques, because I'm gonna use ZBrush and Keyshot, maybe we can mix both together. So we can start sculpting a piece or or a design, or we can, or or even I can grab something that I have already made and I can send it to the Keyshot to start learning the rendering process or special techniques in, inside of, of Keyshot or you are just uh, here to learn or to to see techniques applying to jewelry design or you can tell me which specific technique are you looking for or you are more interested so i can try to 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 design a, a, an example and start making a, a practice so for today i have uh, i have something in mind to start sculpting anything at the same time that I'm reading your your questions, so I have uh, the the um, the reliefs. It's very popular. It's very common in jewelry, you know, That's because uh, as uh, I, I received many orders to make reliefs. So it doesn't matter if uh, we can use the relief for on a coin or on a medal or whatever. Uh, there are many 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 requests that comes to me to start to create reliefs so the, for today i have this example i have this line on this kind of relief this is a, this is a very famous sculptor the, this guy who creates the liberty statue in new york and i love this 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 line from from here. This is the this is how the, this is our relief version of the lion. But the lion, the real sculpture is 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 this one. This is sculpted from directly on a rock or something in, in in on a mountain or something. This is uh, for the is the bell whole lion. I was saying I don't know how to pronounce it. But uh, the relief that I saw you before is based on on this statue, on this huge monument that is in in France. This Martholdi or Martholdi is the name of the of the artist. The real sculpture is located on, in in France, and it's it's amazing. I love it. So I decide to start talking about reliefs for the first time for this first stream so I'm gonna try to start replicate or start making something similar or to, at least I'm gonna try to, to do it this kind of relief and so we are gonna be talking about the how to uh, create reliefs inside of ZBrush or at least my, my way of working so I hope this will be interesting for you Okay, let's read some messages here. <laughs> curses, curses, curses. Okay. So you have again. If I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna at the end of the streaming. I'm gonna leave the the. I'm gonna turn off my my camera and my uh, my zebras, but I'm gonna leave the open the streaming because and at that moment, yeah, maybe you can leave your comments, or maybe you can put there what you are expecting to see here. For example, to create rings or pendants or this kind of jewelry or not. Uh, all of you, I think, already know that uh, I am an really I am an, an sculptor. I'm not a jeweler, so I haven't got any. Uh, 
uh, knowledge about Julie. The, the knowledge that I have about Julie is the, the knowledge that comes from my clients. But I'm really a, an a sculptor. So I, I think in terms of uh, make sculptors or make the sculptings or make models apply to Julie designs. Maybe for that reason, I don't create uh, any kind of a standard jewelry in terms of uh, many hemstones and things like this. All the samples that I'm gonna use are gonna be, I'm gonna for, are, they are going to follow this direction. Is to try to grab any uh, organic shapes. In this case, this is a lion or flowers or human anatomy. Apply to jewelry design. In jewelry design, we are gonna talk about the weights, we're gonna uh, talk about measurements, we're gonna uh, talk about how to wear the piece of jewelry, but uh, I'm not going to create a standard jewelry that you already are creating with uh, the CAD softwares, which are on the market. There are many software, the most popular, I know, I think some of you are writing here that uh, you are using Rhino, CAD softwares, there are many. With those software, you can create many different jewelry things that which are already preset inside of the of the software. You can start creating the band or the prongs of the stone setting. Many you have already have many tools that are doing a specific things inside of uh, the software. But uh, using a software like Zebras, we can adapt. A software which was created to create something completely different to our jewelry process or what we need on our jewelry design. So this is where I have where where I try to to help to you to try to show my processes about how to create in this case uh, uh, a relief for a coin or for a pendant could be both versions. Maybe if I liked what I get today, maybe we can start following. This design is still designing a, I don't know, maybe a circular pendant or something using this, this, this relief. But uh, maybe for the next class we can start uh, sculpting completely different thing. Or, but I'm gonna try to follow your your questions or your what you are expecting to see here. Thank you very much. Andre, uh, glad that you like my my works, and uh, let's uh, start working on on this. So I'm gonna minimize this before I start working. Maybe all of you already knows that you use Zebras combined with a tablet. I'm I am using a Cintiq tablet. I'm with the, the special glove where I'm sculpting directly on the screen. Uh, maybe some of you have a, a standard tablet on on on, the, on your desk. I am using an all 22 inches uh, Cintiq Wacom tablet. I like to to work directly on the screen. The feeling that you have when you are in contact directly with the model when you are sculpting, when you have the screen and you are. The feeling that you are carrying or you are sculpting directly on the surface of the model. For me, my opinion is easier. I know that many people are thinking that it's much better to work with uh, with the standard tablets, which you use on your desk, like uh, when you are drawing or when you are writing on a piece of paper. But I prefer to you to work on a on an interactive monitor or on an interactive. A screen like a uh, Wacom Cintiq. So let's let's start. I'm gonna start importing the image for reference. Going here to texture menu, import. And uh, let's see. I have I have found some references. of this very popular work 
this one this one and this one maybe the one that i like the most when you are collecting uh, references to a store sculpting or to use it to use it as a guide in this case for trying to replicate anything is uh, sometimes it's hard to find a good picture in this case this one you can see that it's illuminated the lights come from from top and gives give us a lot of information about the lines and the shapes about the volumes this one it's uh, it's smaller but you can see here I have less information than here because we are going to create a relief the volume information is very important and here in this case uh, I like also this one because this one is more detailed has more detail that's this one but uh, this one is simpler it's more simple than this one and I'm not sure it's decide to select this one or this one maybe let's go ahead with this one but I like the how the shadows are giving me here the information about the arm the body and the legs the head and the main here so let's see I'm gonna maybe I'm going to select this one this one I'm gonna open my pencil here to start drawing things but I because I like to explain things making drawings on notes and I think that you already know this this tool epic pen tool is to start it's a tool when allows you to start painting on your screen it's very cool for for explanation and I use it a lot for in classes maybe I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna import this texture I select the image and I add it to the spotlight clicking on this button here I have my spotlight ready and I'm gonna do I'm gonna minimize this I'm gonna make it smaller click in here grab it you can grab the image clicking whatever here in the, in the center of the circle if you grab this red circle you can move the menu the, this circle of menu but if you are clicking here inside of the circle you kind of start moving the the image so let's add a little bit more brightness to get as more information as possible um, here what i do normally i'm working with two monitor with two screens so i'm working on zbrush and at the same time i keep open the the image the reference image on the, the another screen but in this case I'm gonna keep this open here in my on my see in the zebras canvas but an other thing that I do is in, this is the first step that I take that I took is to just put the image on the canvas for as a, just for a reference let's make it smaller here and when I start with uh, with uh, relief I always or maybe in 95 of the cases I always start from a plane from this here from a plane so I grab the plane 3d drag it on the canvas get it to edit mode and let's click on make polymetry and the next step that I take is uh, I always say that uh, inside of ZBrush you can work uh, in two ways. This is my my personal point of view. You can start working with the uh, with the units or with the measurements that the 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 model has. So at the beginning you can apply the right units on the right distances or the right measurements at the beginning of the process, or you can start working with the units or with the not not really the unit the the, the the, the measuring that already ZBrush is giving to you. Uh, I think some of you already know that ZBrush is used to work with very small objects. If I am clicking here, I already have here my my plugin menu. If I go to my Scale Master plugin, if I read the measurements of this plane, it is two by two millimeters. So it's it's a very small. Uh, object if we are gonna create uh, 3d printing 
object, in this case a jewelry object, I prefer to start always working with the real, not with the real, because always we are working with real measurements. I'm gonna start working with the the the, the measurements of the object that I need if I print it afterwards. So I'm gonna select these units because we are we are gonna use we are gonna work in millimeters. And let's see if we can we can decide maybe if we are gonna make a coin it's not going to be a huge coin or if of if after we decide to start working on a kind of pendant uh, maybe 30 millimeters maybe 30 30 or 35 millimeters it's going to be realistic let's stay not so big and not so small if I click here let's click on right here tape in this three millimeters uh, be careful about keep this button active because we're gonna change one axis I'm gonna keep all of the, all of the others the rest of the axis proportional so let's keep 30 by 30 has in thickness so 3.2 let's create I'm gonna turn on this all because but I only have one tool tool that doesn't matter I prefer to keep this turn it off so recipe so tool now I am st I'm gonna start working with uh, 30 30 mm millimeters by 30 millimeters template to start working my my relief so once we have set the measure of the object I'm gonna close this I'm gonna put the this image the reference image behind of the plane to start following the contour or start using this as a guide to when I start sculpting to start uh, uh, knowing where is the head and where are the eyes uh, the arms how long it is so it's like a, we are gonna see through the the objects to be able to follow the contour or start to to start grabbing the different landmarks of the object so to do this I'm gonna use the floor in this case the floor by default is active on the Y axis. Yeah, this is a very, very popular question. Every, I, I don't know for, for why, for any reason, when you start talking about zebras applied to jewelry, everyone wants to know how to make the stone settings in zebras. How to put hands, prongs, and things like this? Sure, I, we are, we are gonna we are gonna learn, or, or at least I'm gonna show you how I do it. I do this, so I have some custom brushes to do this and a custom uh, workflow that I have. It's it's not maybe it's not the best, but it's mine. Let's see if you like it or not. But this is very popular. Everyone wants to to learn how to set the stones in C brush. Okay, but zebras, don't forget that zebras is an sculpting software. So, of course, that we can set the stones. We can do almost everything inside of zebras. The, the way that zebras has to do the things, in most of the cases, for not saying maybe 100% of the cases, it has its own way to do the things. And it's a different way to do the things that the other software has. But uh, at the end, you are going to be able to do all inside of super this is the one of the things that i love inside of super that you have you're gonna be able to do to do almost everything and many different things inside of super but here we're, we're gonna be focusing on talking about the uh, jewelry so and of course the stone setting it's a very important part of the jewelry uh, design so maybe if we follow with the design on the next stream maybe we're gonna start putting a pave or something surrounding the surrounding the the design maybe if I can start painting here something sketching something using this so what we can do maybe I don't know maybe we can start following this path to start making something circular I have, I have tried to make a circle but it's so let's try it again to make put it here a circle or maybe a pendant with something more like this uh, i don't know with the stones here i don't know let's 
let's try to design something something cool but at the moment we are gonna start creating just the, the relief just for covering all the aspects about the jewelry and one of them of course is going to be the stone setting Uh, yeah, Jonathan's gave is asking my question is because same client asked me to build lion for example and then they want stones on them the, that's why I wanted to know yeah I think yeah it's very it's very popular this is one thing that I don't like I have to be honest I don't like the, the design which are completely covering with the stones uh, most of the people are trying to do this because it, maybe be, the reason why, as I like, I'm an, uh, mainly I'm an, I'm, an, I'm I have a sculptor mind, so I like more to just to see the the forms of the shape of how the light reacts on the surface of a model. In this case, of this uh, relief, but I don't care about to add stones uh, covering the whole body because. But I know that the clients always are requesting this, so that is good to know to learn how to do this but but this is not my I'm not a specialized on uh, a huge power settings and, and and it's the thing that I, I don't like in some cases but I like I like for example the I like the design which has Pavés, um, big pavés. So what, I, what I like the most is to try to work with colors so it's a way to have add more value of the to the design to apl to apply color using the colors from from the stones with different colors on different intensities. It is a it, it is a very cool design tool to add color to give to 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 give a strength of to the design. But just the fact to add the stones for uh, increase the value of the design. This is that this is my personal opinion. This is not what I like the most but I'm gonna try to ask answer sorry to answer your question anyway let's try to remove this you can turn on and turn off this circular menu pressing the C on the keyboard so hide or show this I'm gonna I was talking before about the the reference image and I'm gonna add it on the back to use it as a guide so I turn off my Y axis and I turn off my C axis that it's gonna be behind so I'm gonna open here my left tray and here I have my draw menu remember that you can drag and drop any menu you can grab for example this is the drag menu here you have this little icon you can click and drag and keep it open on your left tray or on your left tray so and here is the place where you can control all the settings related to the to the floor or to the grid so I'm gonna make it bigger because it's, it's too small compared to the 30 millimeter template that's grid size here you can control the grid size and here you have at the bottom of the menu here you have the different the three the three different axes front back up down left right it means um front back is the c axis y up down x left right so let's open my front back map one you get access to the texture menu where you find the import button where you can import the image that you want to put it on the on the floor so let's select this and here it is so let's start centering the image let's put it here we said before we have 30 millimeters from left to right maybe like this maybe a little bit bigger like this let's push it a little bit to the right and that's it so one thing that I like to do but I recommend to do it as well is to once you have your grid you have selected your your right axis you have your your image attached to it with the right location you can save it 
So this is gonna be CPress is gonna save a CGR file. This is C grid. This is a Lion Relief. So I keep it safe for the next session. When I always when I add in a, a reference image attached to the floor, I used to save it. So we can and now to to make it transparent two more things to set or to touch is the fill mode by default is set by one let's push it to the right to three now we can we are going to be able to see through the object for example if i grab a sphere here you can see that i'm watching through the sphere if i come back to the default value to one the image it's behind the so let's turn this to one and this is my my personal settings are uh, enhanced factor to the its maximum value so you can and the enhanced opacity maybe at the middle maybe here is too bright maybe here is too soft maybe put it here maybe in the middle so we can we're gonna be able to see through the object and we are gonna able to follow the different shapes okay let's follow let's close this okay uh, Ismael Martin is asking I guess that you are asking that if I already have available curse of zebras no I'm sorry not because all the curses I gave was direct curses I don't have any recorded curse okay let's follow working on this I'm gonna turn this floor off but this is one thing that I that I do most of the things that I do because I'm used to do it many th many times so when I start making a relief this is what I do that uh, I guess I I hope that it's gonna be helpful for you or if you don't find it helpful so this is my my, my way of working because when we are creating a relief of course one one measure that it's very important of course is what as what where we said before is the height or how height or how wide the the relief is going to be but the most important value of our relief is the c-axis is the depth how, how high is going to be the relief in this case and there we are going to be talking about high reliefs or medium reliefs or maybe low reliefs depending on the the kind of design that you are doing i the the more satisfactory reliefs to create i think is uh, the high relief because you have more room you have more the the distance between the base the lowest point and the highest point is uh, is higher so you have more uh, space to work with the balance or, or to start uh, sculpting if the the relief is very very thin it's quite difficult to sculpt things because uh, for example the difference between the nose in this case on the elbow or with the or with this kind of part of the body it's so close one to the other that there isn't even room that we are talking about uh, 0.5 millimeters or even less so things become becomes uh, more difficult to to create and it's what maybe in future streamings i'm gonna i can give you some advices or processes about how to do this but today for today uh i prefer to create a high relief or maybe medium to relief so the standard high for a uh, or, or what i think that is a standard because maybe it should be around three millimeters and maybe the highest point is going to be five millimeters we are talking about the thickness so if we're watching for example this from this view we are we have the level this is already the plane that we have and the relief is it will start growing here i will start growing and growing till reaching the highest point and 
till uh, start going down till the plane again so uh, we have here at uh, its highest point and the lowest point maybe here we we can be around three to five millimeters maybe because when we are talking about five millimeters maybe you can you can be thinking that it's gonna be too high because but maybe the five the highest point five millimeter maybe watching the the reference image is gonna be the nose we are gonna have something like this so this is gonna be the plane maybe we are gonna have here and here is going to be the nose but the rest the rest is going to be almost at the same level we are gonna we are gonna have here three millimeters maybe here we are reaching five well this is only one uh, only at one point we are gonna reach five millimeters so it's not going to be a very thick uh, piece of, of of metal I think so let's say about five millimeter maximum highest point how do I set this so how do I set this so uh, what I grab I'm gonna start talking about my brushes some of them by custom brushes made by by me and some of them for example like the SK brushes they are they are very popular brushes uh, comes from a Japanese guy who creates uh, amazing brush uh, package and I use them a lot well not not all of them only the this maybe this one two three and four this SK polys SK cloth SK slash SK care uh, and the rest are default brushes the move brushes this is one brush that I love it I'm gonna show you why I, this is this is a very quite new brush maybe it comes with uh, two versions before maybe a 2020 version or maybe a 2019 version I don't know and the move infinite brush this is one of the latest additions that I use the most and uh, the others are just default brushes and here I have one custom brushes the brushes that I use for stone setting this is the for making the cuts and for making the grains or and this is not don't come from me this is uh, from from the guy very cool guy the friend Hazard that you already can download it to start using hem cuts and this is uh, also uh, one of the my custom brushes to to create male and female um, keys for but this is mainly for figures not not for not real for for jewelry but in some cases I have used it on on jewelry things okay so I'm gonna grab this in the C modeler here I have my C ball I'm gonna, gonna turn this on and I'm gonna extrude the face of the of the plane so I'm gonna stay here in the center of a polygon pressing the space bar and I'm gonna the action that I'm going to do I'm gonna make a QMAX and extrusion to all polygons so let's extrude it so once we have thickness I come back again to my scale master to the scale master and now here we are at almost 4.44 millimeters so we said before we are going to use five millimeters at the highest point I'm going to turn this off because I don't want to change I'm going to keep the 30 millimeters on X and Y remaining the same as, as they are so I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to turn this set this to five five millimeters so here we have here I have five millimeters right so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna create a duplicate so here we have a box what I said before what I was drawing before here we have a box um, a bounding box container so we're gonna start building or model inside of the, is this box we are not gonna go outside of the of the box because this point from this point from to this point here we have the five millimeters okay so another thing that I do is to duplicate this I'm gonna make a copy I'm gonna select the first one who already has the history I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna come in back 
to the history till getting the plane again and what I do as I said before this is a assistant this is a process that I, I follow if you I hope you find it useful what I do is to flip it display properties I flip it and I uh, repeat the same operation as before and this is what what I have you can see you have something like a cookie with two parts this is this is from this point to this point R or five millimeter high we're gonna start building here or relief and I'm gonna use this as the boolean uh, plane that I have on the back that everything that it's behind or it's gonna be inside of here we are gonna cut it off after the boolean operation at the final of the process so we don't care about what is inside here so this is what I have I have the the back cube yeah, uh, I'm gonna use it as, the, as a boolean mesh and the front cube I'm gonna use it as a, as a container or as a bounding box to see if I am going over the five millimeters or we are staying below the five millimeters right So you have any questions you can ask whatever and one last thing that I do is because if I start I'm gonna save this before this is, uh, this is gonna be or lion you leave and this is going to be as this is going to be as I said before this is going to be our uh, boolean cube the boolean cube needs to be at the bottom of the list because everything who is going to be on top any sub two which are on top of this it's the, this cube is gonna uh, make the difference a boolean operation like this if I turn this on if I click on the boolean you can see here for any reason I think that I move it here okay and this is going to be my bait my the my where I'm gonna start building my the different parts for the relief what I do here is I flip this here this is what we are ha what what we are having we are having this I click on here on flipping the mess you have this button here display properties flip so and here you're gonna start I'm gonna turn this on you're gonna start working like this so here did you put it on the on the side view are you gonna you are going to be able to see the highest point but if you are working on the front view you're gonna you're, you're gonna be able to work on the back side of the of the cube right and from here what I do is I start adding different sub tool and I start sculpting let's save this I, I'm staying here and I do this isolated IMM primitives I normally start from for example from the main body well, another thing that I do and I this is I think this is in my opinion this is very important because I have seen many different techniques to create uh, to create reliefs but I prefer to start building the relief with different sub tools to start cutting the model as much as possible or the design as much as possible so for that reason I'm gonna start adding the, the body is going to be one piece for example the arm it's going to be another piece or another sub tool the the back the rear legs or the back legs they are going to be another sub tool even the food the, they are going to be another sub tool i'm going to start chopping or start cutting or start splitting the the model into as many sub tools as necessary because after if i decide merge one to other start making boolean between between some of them 
I can I'm gonna be able to start merging or splitting subtotal but uh, I start uh, building the 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 relief as a maquette or as a as a Lego something with different pieces I never start uh, creating a mask and I start extruding the surface and I start directly sculpting the surface with the brushes I just I start grabbing different primitives in this case spheres or cylinders I start dropping all of them inside on on the surface and when everything is in place I start sculpting and I see maybe five millimeters is gonna be too high I think but let's see so I grab this I M M primitives sphere turn this on so I'm gonna be able to start this so I can uh, split mask so this is going to be so calling the gizmo I'm used to work with the shortcuts so when I am uh, sculpting I use the Q from the keyboard so now you can sculpt and you press the W from the keyboard you're calling the gizmo so Q and W is the same thing that you are going here and clicking draw or, um, or move doesn't matter move scale rotate doesn't matter on each one you are going to be able to use the the gizmo so I'm gonna squeeze this out like this a little bit so as I said before I don't care about all that it's inside of the, on the back cube I don't care because I'm gonna cut it if you want to see which is the fact if I turn this on this is the negative icon turn this light boolean action for any reason the Zbrush is not able to show me uh, the messes which are flipped so I need to hide this that's the reason why I'm watching this is something so weird like this if I if I turn this off I'm gonna be able to see it like this if I turn on the light boolean it, but this is what I was saying so I don't care about what is inside of the, of the cube so like this but I prefer to keep this open at this moment like this uh, I'm sorry because someone is asking to me Some people are asking to me if the pre pri the streaming is private or not. I don't know why they are not watching the stream. I don't know. Maybe they are on the on the wrong one. That's the first time, I don't know why this is happening.
to follow. So I go with my, and this is when I start using this brush. And I said before, this is a brush, this is a new brush. Huh. Not, not, not quite new, but maybe it, it comes in the 2020 version, maybe a 2019 version. This is very uh, recent uh, uh, brush. What I, what I am doing here, I'm going to be able to, for example, I'm working on the front view. If I use the default move brush, if I, for example, I'm going to turn this on, let's make it bigger like this, and I'm going to start pulling the ball till reaching here the hips of the lion here like this. So to make it start adjusting here, start making something like this. What you are doing here, you can watch in here from the from the side view. I am just grabbing this vertex here. But I am not touching the back part of the mesh. And this here is where this brush is very helpful if i grab it history coming back to the to the beginning here if i grab this brush the move infinitive uh move infinitive what move move infinitive depth brush the icon you can recognize the icon is so you I can start grabbing this. Let's turn this on again. I'm gonna start making the same like before. Start pulling the mesh till reaching the body. Maybe the body is going here, like here, and like here. And you are watching that I am moving uh, not only the uh, the front polygons and also moving the polygon which are behind this is the reason why they call it uh, move infinitive depth because when I am touching here I am also touching here towards the C axis the depth on, of the canvas this is the reason why the move infinitive depth brush is very very useful when you are uh, making reliefs this is uh, I think this is very it is a good addition, very good addition. Okay, so let's follow working with this. What I can see and another thing that I used to do is when you start grabbing a mess and you start pulling or pushing the mess to start creating different forms or different shapes, you are noticing that you are stretching the polygons. You are making the polygons bigger or smaller, depending on if you are pulling or pushing the mesh. So it's a it, it's a good habit uh, at some point to start refreshing the mesh. You have two ways, you know, you already know you can use Dynamesh or you can start using the Siri measure. As I am, most of the cases when, when I am working with the reliefs, I am always I used to work always with 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 Dynamis because gives uh, it gives to me more freedom. So I I don't have to be worried about going here and I start going to the Siri measure and start pressing the Siri measure button every time that I want to rebuild or create a new mess with the shortcut Control Drag. You know with the Dynamis is more faster and even more if you are at this stage at the blocking stage where you are just uh, uh, adding forms and you are sculpting fast so we don't at this point we don't care about the topology so we are we are we are uh, taking care more about the the shapes or the volume so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go here the dynamics i'm gonna turn this on so very important point. By default, Dynamics comes with 128 resolution value. And with this resolution value, the Dynamics is giving to me a mess composed by more than 1 million polygons. As a starting point, when we are just dropping things, dropping uh, primitives, and we are going to start uh, sculpting very roughly the shape of, of the mess. 
A store having from the beginning more than one million is not a good idea. I prefer to keep one uh, not so dense mess. So I'm gonna undo this. I'm gonna go, for example, 88. And now let's give it dynam dynamics. For me, a stay above half of a million is still a lot. So let's put it on maybe 12 or 16. Now, this, this is too low, so let's to put 28, 32, 86,000 polygons, okay, it's okay. One thing that I that I say is, when you're working with a low resolution dynamics, it's just my, my, my point of view, when you are working with a low resolution mess and the, this res low resolution is given to you a low uh, resolution mess with a low amount of polygons, looks like the material it's softer than when you are reaching half of a million or even a million or more than a million you can start feeling that the, the material becomes harder and harder and it's it more and more difficult to to smooth the surface or to work or to sculpt or to remove uh, parts of the surface that's the reason why i prefer to start working with a low, very low resolution mesh don't forget to turn this off button because if not if I try to smooth this nothing happens because I already have this spotlight projection active and she is thinking that I'm gonna use this image to project the color information to the mess so she is not gonna allow me to sculpt anything till I turn this button off you will find this button here brush maybe it's on simple Blah, 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 where it is here on the samples and here you can find this button so, so keep this spotlight projection so now I can start smoothing the, the surface so more things to learn uh, now I gonna I'm still using this doesn't matter it's not necessary to use this one what I you what I see here I, I'm gonna start observing the the sculpt the forms that I need to create, that I need to sculpt. So what I am watching here that the this is the stomach and this is the, the chest. Here are the hips. Here what I'm watching here is something happening, something like this. At this point, we are having something like this, a star growing, a start till here, and now it start falling. So here this point will be this point and this point will be this point maybe well, maybe maybe more this point like this so we are starting from a flat surface and we are looking forward to start balancing the surface to start creating gaps peaks and valleys on on the surface a very useful method to do this to achieve this talking about due uh, relief sculpting so we can grab this this is a shortcut. I can press the Alt key and I can start pulling the surface. You can start, you can, for example, using this, make the brush size a little bit smaller with the Alt key, twist this and twist here and put here. And I'm gonna start creating what I'm looking for. So you are, you are working into this direction. This is the model. This is your, your pen instead of use the, the the side view and start pulling or pushing the mesh from this view as a, as a relief it's better to work from the front view and uh, with the alt we are going to start pulling or pushing the mesh using the alt key with any of the brush of the move brushes this will work so i'm gonna create this a little bit bigger so let's pull this in so and let's pull this in a little bit more like this let's smooth out a little bit the surface so i can start i have the necessary big symbolic on the surface so let's follow here let's follow here let's follow here so like this so i'm gonna grab another primitive that i like for create hard arms I don't know why, but I like this to use this. This is the capsule. I'm gonna split max points, put it on place like this. I, as we insert on already dynamics, we can control drag 
and we can recalculate the dynamics here. Here we have the dynamics. Let's uh, squeeze it a little bit like this, and I can start creating the arm. So the cool thing about this brush, because remember that at the same time which I am touching the front view, I am doing the same thing on the front, on the back polygon. And this is very useful to start creating the arm, for example. This is gonna be the, I don't remember how to say ombro in, in English. It's shoulder the this is going to be the shoulder and now here we have a kind of a strand of hair or where the elbow is something like this go here and here so goes something like this what I can do is now I can grab uh, from this view and kind of start pulling this because it's going to be more like an arc. Uh, yes, I'm going to try to record because the videos has been recording. Has been recorded. Hope everything will work. fine after because I don't trust too much on uh, rec recording videos because sometimes crashes and there I, I have had a lot of issues with the with the recording sessions I don't know why but I'm not a big expert about video recording so let's stay here for example let's grab again the same let's grab an sphere now to start creating the, the back leg is split a mass point like the same put it here squish it move infinitive let's start put it on place like this of course it will be something like this instead of leave it straight as a real leg let's start from but this is not the straightest it has it is a, a little bit angle I transform the dynamics and I'm gonna start here and let's start here now what I, and one thing that I can do extra thing using the same brush with the back face active I'm gonna start pulling here this I can grab this and start pulling here to start grabbing and this is what we are doing if I turn this off it, it start making boolean I can you can see that we're gonna start building the different levels the different steps of the of the relief and after we can decide if we are too high or too low and the best thing about this is of if I already have everything split into different subtools, I, I can, for example, select the leg. Where is the leg? Here, this is the leg, and I, we decide that we are watching that it's too far away from the from the body. We can push this in or push this out. This is the good thing about to start working with uh, different pieces or different different subtools. Let's save it. Uh, no questions. No questions. No questions at the moment. Okay. So more things. So I'm gonna add the. Uh, I'm gonna leave the head, maybe, for another day, to to try to to don't be making the same thing all the time. I'm gonna try to start different things, to start creating different different things. So I'm gonna select again this, the capsule, to create the fit. I'm gonna put it here. 
the split mass points put it here put it like this extrude it this control drag to update the the dynamis and this is going to be the fit move infinitive with the back face active I can pull this in to start yeah uh, one Joel studio is asking to be the same as before yes I uh, yes, I think to teach about the stone setting uh, as I said before I don't know why everything is uh, expecting to to learn something new about the stone setting so I, I will try to to show different things because if you already are using CAD software as Rhino, Rhino Gold, Matrix, 3D China, whatever you already have a bunch of tools already designed to create a stone setting I don't know why maybe you have more power with the with the cat software to cre to create a stone the stone setting than Cbrush but of course you can do this you can do it inside of Cbrush I will uh, teach you how so I am using the same process like before with the alt key I'm able to push in or out with the with the depth the intensity I can I can grab this point and I can pull in or pull out with the, any of the move brushes combined with the with the all key so now this is going to be the fit something like this and for example I can duplicate this and I can use the same to create the rear arm like this and like this and this is going to be a little bit angle much better like this for example for the pause or the paw of I don't know how to pronounce it, they call the paw or the, 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 the hands. So, what I can do to do this, I can be I'm gonna turn this off, I'm gonna can create the mask with the lasso okay, at the end, invert the mask, and I can start extruding this till here. Move infinitive, back face active. So I can. And this point, you can see how I stretch the polygons are. I can. It's the moment to recalculate the dynamics. Control drag. Now I have a new mesh. Back face active. At this point is very important to get the back face active. If not, I am bending everything. So if when I'm looking for is to just to act thickness at the bottom. So turn this on and this here and here and now I'm gonna be able to to create this part and uh, maybe I can do, show this and I can start adding here at the back Pop. and I start create building the okay move infinitive yeah the move infinity depth I think is perfect for relief sculpting I think I think this is the best usage that you can find of for this brush I think so let's maybe the the shoulder maybe is too thin maybe using the same pushing 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 the shave and now I'm gonna start creating the main this volume everything like this 
I'm gonna split this into maybe into three subtools. We're we are gonna we are gonna have the main, we're gonna have the head, and maybe we are, we are gonna have the ears. So, but for the main, this is a good example to, to show you the something different. So I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna all again. And a sphere, a split mass point. Put it here. Pull it in. This. And I'm gonna move infinitive again. Let's following the contour from the image. Control drag. New dynamics. If I turn on my solo, I'm able to see solo just to to be as more accurate as possible but it's not really important but uh, to be too worried about if just we are following exactly the same contour but in terms of proportions it's important I mean that it's not important to stay here or stay here it's not doesn't really matter but in terms of proportion for example if we are here or we are here we are gonna see a lot of differences between the sculpting and the and the image so just try to keep it as more proportional as possible this is what I, what we have and now as we did before same brush alt key start pulling to send the portion of the mess behind so here here and maybe here maybe a little bit here and now is the moment to uh, start now start creating something something new this is what this is one brush that you can see is on my uh, the package of my the brushes that I use uh, the most this is the H polish the H polish you can see the icon is like you are going to be able to flat the surface you're going to be able to start creating planes and what I am seeing here in the picture, you can see this is the. It's like as we are, if we are watching a cube or something like a cube. So here we have different uh, ages, different ages, different corners, ages. What I am watching, what I am just you need to start be familiar to with the planes and with the edges when you are watching a, a reference in this case the main is a good is a, is a quite good example what I am watching here this is a this is one age that we have here that they start from here from the ear and ends on on the chest more or less and here goes here and goes here this could be this is going to be the face number one this is the face number one and this is what I see the face number two here is the face the number two when you can see this is one plane you have one H and start changing the direction so here you have an H in the middle so it's like you start working with an angle with different planes press the end keyboard okay so this is what I what I'm watching so if I start for, with black for example this is the H and I'm talking about this is the H so I'm gonna need to start to start creating planes and for that is perfect this brush so I can start creating the plane start creating planes like this and another brush that I use for do this to start creating the edge the border between two planes or or the vertex of the angle so if you have an angle this is the the edge so one brush that I like to use is the SK slash this brush I prefer to change the alpha I like to work more with the alpha 39 this one 
and I try to place where the edge is. I'm gonna turn on, keep my alt key to be able to to create an edge, and I'm gonna follow the contour like this. The edge goes. This is the path, the curve, and the same here. But now I'm not going to press the alt key. So this is the end of the main. Goes here and goes here. Goes here, here. here. I'm gonna reduce the lazy radius to be able to work faster like this and this is what what I have I can for example mm, mm, clay build up I prefer to remove the alpha and I'm st gonna start carving this with the alt key press you can see you can curve on from the surface with the alt key you can start removing this and here we have a vertex and now with the H polish again. I know that I need to go till the border. Here, 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 here. Don't use a big brush. If not, you're gonna destroy. It's gonna be quite easy to destroy the borders. Try, try to make it carefully. Here we have a plane, and here we have the another plane. And then a smaller. And now you can start creating here the, the plane like this, like this, and maybe I'm gonna follow touching this plane to make it bigger. Now it's time to adjust because the distance between this point of the main of the shoulder is too high. Maybe we need to adjust final adjustment here. And here with the alt key pushing back. Let's check that we still have the curve into place. You are noticing that I'm always pressing the S key continuously. So S key changing the brush size working. S key changing the brush size working. So it's but very very important the, to try to work with the right brush size to try to avoid to create you know, non-regular non surfaces so more HK is H polish to start polishing this polishing this and the shoulder is goes inside here and now you can start following the, the different shapes and for example, with this slash, here we have a border in the middle, right? And now we have the space for the for the head of the pocket, or with the key. You for you start working on this let's save it mm, 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 mm. yeah the move infinitive I like the stone yeah the stone placement I, I also use the nanomes the nanomes process nanomes yes but, not, but I'm gonna use but, <coughs> but it's a different way to use nanomes it's not exactly so no, we're gonna stay below five millimeter for sure maybe we're gonna maybe we're gonna be you know that if you are calling the gizmo w and you press the y you now you can use the transpose line from this point to this point extending the transpose the transpose line from point to point. Don't forget to keep the S the shift key pressed to be sure that we are making an 100x straight line. So maybe here we are now about under we are 3.89 millimeters, around four millimeter thickness. 
what we can do if uh, the, the client are requesting to us to create a five millimeter thickness what we can do is to grab all the pieces together and mm, pull it to the to the right in this case to be closer to the five millimeter thickness but I think in terms of proportion around four millimeters I think it's going to work fine I think like this okay I'm gonna uh, let's to keep making uh, different things to don't be always just doing the same thing okay before do this this is another brush that I like the polish difference between the H polish and the polish is what I call this is like a soft sandpaper this is like a hard sandpaper or the action is more like a you are hammering or you are hitting the surface with a flat uh, tool in this case the polish is like when you are uh, grabbing a piece of sandpaper and you can start uh, sanding the surface so you can get this effect with the all key all key press all the time when I kind of start sanding this to a start ascending this this part because it's going back so the main is going back in this way like this and if we are watching from this view maybe the in here the main now is this describes this kind of arc and I'm watching here from the from the reference maybe it has more something like this it's like a open S instead of an arc so in this case it's good to use the move brush not the infinitive because if I use the infinitive I'm gonna move not only this front polygons and the polygon which are behind so and I'm only looking forward to move this shape so uh, let's push this in to describe this S from this view so now we are watching more something similar now what I can do is from this view I have a problem also that uh, this is here this is too thick this is more has to be more curved so I can grab this you can start watching the differences between use the default move brush or the move infinitive the move infinitive is <coughs> is very very useful in many cases but in other cases it's necessary to use the default move brush again the polish I start sending this and this is the reason why I'm working with a very low resolution dynamics because it allows me to to destroy or to move or to send very fast the the volume. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I, I I don't think that I have a very um, very defined style because I, I am always creating commissions on order for many many different clients. And every client is requesting to me a different thing maybe I don't have time to to create my or develop my own style I don't know maybe but if you are watching this like a and a style it's good to know yes I like it so another thing uh, that I use very often <coughs> you can noticing that if I press the is key the shift key from the keyboard you are calling this default smooth brush but I am using but I never use the default the smooth uh, smooth brush I use a combination of the smooth peaks and smooth valleys so as the names are saying you have a, a peak and you have a valley so if you want to uh, remove the peak you start smoothing the peak till getting a less pointy uh, surface is the way to use the smooth peaks but if you are looking for 
uh, feel a depression or a hole it's very useful to use the uh, smooth valleys in this case you be able to start this if I'm watching here this is how some uh, this is surface is not doesn't look good because here we have a kind of depression like this and like this is not not very soft the way that I have to 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 equalize or to balance the surface is uh, the smooth bodies so I select the smooth bodies and I'm gonna start sculpting this and I can it's like the the feeling is that you are uh, you are filling a gap so you are putting uh, hot wax on, on a gap to start covering the the hole or the non-regular surface so this is the way that I have to start balancing the surface instead of using the default smooth brush always a smooth peaks or move or smooth valleys where are this brushes you can you need to go to the your light box go to your brush folders and inside of the smooth folder you will find a smooth valleys and a smooth peaks so I, I always use a combination of both and it starts smoothing the peaks then the smoothing the valley so I start balancing uh, the surface and avoid destroying the surface for example if I can see here this depression this this that it goes too far for example here I have something like a B shape like this and I don't like that goes till here I prefer to remove this part and move the ending from here to here a good application of the smooth valleys is this so smooth valleys and I can start smoothing this and there you go let's save it okay now yes let's let's create another something something different uh, this this kind of base that you can see one of the most complex things to achieve on on reliefs is the sense of perspective so it's like a mix of sculpting and drawing at the same time so you are sculpting with uh, volumes but you need to try to create a fake illusion of perspective and you can see here this is the this is the perspective that I am saying it's like a cube that this is a of course we can't put a cube a cube there uh, because if we are if we can break the the thickness of the what do one very this is a quite simple but and maybe basic but what I can do is I'm gonna pan the cube this is the cube the cube is still small I'm gonna turn this solo I'm gonna turn this on that's squeeze it make it bigger put it here put it here like this and with the reference maybe it needs to go more, more or less like this maybe a little bit more inside like this of course we are watching we can't do this because this is here we don't have the illusion of perspective that the real image has so we need to create a fake illusion of, of perspective and very useful way of doing this or my way this is a very old-fashioned way to do this so why to call the okay let's extrude it before to do anything let's extrude it be sure that we are behind of the back give for the final boolean something like this and what we can do now so w to use the gizmo now y to use the transpose i'm gonna drag the transpose from left to right like this we are on, on move and i can start moving this uh, freely without just without pressing any shift any any key you can start doing this you can start 
applying a deformation to forming the so let's uh, put it on here like this now there we have the top and now if we move it to the right like this we have a little bit more like this <coughs> here we have the the thing that we are looking for of course if you are I think I think that I, I can I guess that you are thinking that this is not completely correct why because this is a here we have a, what do you call this is a, it's an overhang it's this is the technical world word I think you can see this is a compare with the 90 degrees here we have a um, um, I, I don't know how to call it is to an empty space here this is not possible to to see on a on a relief and the way to avoid this so what is the right way will be this is instead of this I sh I need to get something more like this just to fill this gap So what I do now is this is the this is the right position you can see here okay let's say let's call this no I think I can use the is a little bit more here to the right here and it's not so angle you can see here that my angle is wrong so I need to put this a little bit less pronounced and from this point it's just a little bit more like this now yes you can see now everything is aligned to the to the reference okay like this so what I do now is to to avoid this is I convert this into a into dynamis let's convert this into dynamics let's see as we did before 128 is too high let's keep 88 yeah oof, it's gonna be too high well no it's okay half of a million okay let's save it what I do I'm gonna turn this on solo mode what I do is to use one feature that you have here on your polygroup menu is the use the group front uh, option so everything is uh, each polygon which is facing to the camera it's gonna it's going to be grouped into the same polygroup so for and for the purpose that we are looking for is gonna be very very handy so group front I'm gonna Turn this on to watch the different colors so group front and uh, this is what we have you can see now we have one polygroup here the same polygroup here and the same poly and the only thing that need to to create is control click to mask control and click to unmask and now uh, we can make this and now we have remove the overhang As it is a dynamics control drag control drag and now we have the the the, the overhang remove it now you can see this is the this is the how it was before and now is how it is 90 degrees this is going to be very useful if you are using CNC machines or but again so for for avoid overhangs the roof front uh, process is very useful okay. but again keep in mind that we are still on the blocking 
part of the, of the process, proportions and things like this. Okay, maybe I'm gonna start thinking about finishing. So then I this is let's apply more light here. And for I'm gonna save it. On the next streaming, I'm gonna try to keep working on this, but it's still a lot to do. Still getting something more or less similar here. For example, on the on the on the pole, you can you can start working on the start making the planes. You can see how. You're gonna start watching the planes. The planes are very important. To, before you start sculpting anything, you start blocking the different planes. So you need to start observing, watching the the reference, and you need to, you should start watching the the planes. For example, here here we have a plane, and here we have another plane. And this is the shoulder and the shoulder the, the edge of the plane goes from the shoulder till the wrist so with different planes here we have another plane and it becomes more narrow here here I have a plane for example here I have another plane this to start building the fake illusion of perspective as we did with the cube but with the sculpting process to start creating planes before I start sculpting anything so I start before I start blocking the different planes for example with the, um, the same brush this brush that I used to start creating the planes the back there is a plane the stomach here we have another plane the brush eyes very important here we have another plane. This is going to be the front plane. Uh, on the on the leg, here we have another plane. Another plane on the knee, on the top, on the leg. Here, another plane here on the butt, on the rear part. So you start creating your your planes, right? Maybe this plane needs to be a little bit higher. Let's push this with the smooth valleys filled in this gap, and now I'm able to. This here it has a kind of curl or something here. The O key with the move brush, you can see you can push in and push out the surface from the from the camera, and now you can start creating the different different planes. Okay, let's save it and let's start thinking about finishing. So, just to much of, I'm very appreciate very appreciate that all of you has been here for I don't know two hours less a little bit less than two hours so so I hope that you found it uh, useful and I hope that I keep your your expectations ready for the next streaming or for for my next uh, uh, publication on the social media so I really appreciate your to be that for to you that have been watching here all the stream very grateful and if you have uh, as I said before I'm gonna leave the the chat open for some minutes if you can for example drop a start 
uh, as putting there your questions or which are the 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 techniques or or the workflows that you would like to see more I, I know the stone setting that's always our start but I always try to avoid to, to talk about the stone setting because many people are making a stone setting but I'm gonna show you my process of course on future streamings but again for example if you find it interesting how the, the reliefs works if you would like to to see this relief completely finish it or not when you don't care about the end the end of the process uh, I would like to, to know it as well but uh, I will try to 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 make an stream I'm gonna try to to make it once a week I'm gonna try it I don't know depending on the workload that I have or how busy I am with the deadlines or with the turnaround time for the, for my existing projects. I'm gonna try to make a an stream once a week, and let's see because I need to keep practicing about how to stream to try to avoid technical issues that we had before, and and I will try to catch more audience uh, publishing when uh, my streaming on the social media to try to call more people who are interested in my my job. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to uh, start practicing and policing my streaming method. But uh, but uh, in the future, you are, you are going to be the my VIP VIP uh, listeners because he, this is my first streaming ever. And and let's see how things going in the future. Yeah, already people are asking here that uh, they would like to. To see this is called finish it okay i like i would like to finish it also because i love to scope lions you know and this is a pretty this is a very cool uh, uh relief and i love the the feeling of clay feeling that has on the surface so, and also we can create a very cool render of of this one there are many tools inside of zbrush to achieve this kind of uh, clay sculpting feeling but I like to use it. I don't like. I try to to avoid the cat shiny surfaces. So I like to apply like this on the main. This kind of feeling that carving by hand or like here. You can see here on the main with the strokes, loose strokes, and here looks like the, it has been carved on wax or with on wet clay or something we, we can try to achieve this kind of finishing also here okay thanks to you and uh, see you I hope to see you on the next streaming so bye